Hi there. Welcome back to Kelly's Homemade Kitchen. And first of all, I apologize that it's been so long since I've uploaded a video um, without going into all the details. We've just had a lot of unexpected things happen around the house, issues with appliances and blah, blah, blah. So like I said, I won't bore you with the details, but we are back and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a homemade carrot cake. And I believe I've got all the ingredients laid out here. Um, this calls for three cups of all-purpose flour. And of course, as I've said before, the very first thing you want to do, which I forgot to say, of course, is preheat your oven before you start mixing. That way, of course, it's heated and ready to go when your batter is ready to go in. So I've just dumped the three cups of all-purpose flour into my mixing bowl here. And we have two cups of sugar, uh, three teaspoons of baking soda. So let's do that. One, two, and three. Okay. Uh, two teaspoons of baking powder. And if no one's ever noticed this before, when you, this is generally the most common brand of baking powder you'll see on your grocery store shelf. Uh, one thing that I think is really neat about it is they put this uh, metal ledge, if you want to call it that, in here. And what's so neat about it is when I put my measuring spoon in there to get, in this case, two teaspoons, I can use that ledge to make it an even teaspoon. So for people that are somewhat OCD, <laughs> like me, that's uh, a satisfying thing. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon. And this is a half teaspoon measuring uh, apparatus. So we're gonna put four of these to equal the two teaspoons. And there's four. And you know, if you're anything like me, who is extremely forgetful, as you add ingredients, it can sometimes be a good idea to set what you've added as you go along to the side so you know you've added it. Um, okay, that was cinnamon. So one teaspoon of ground cloves. One teaspoon of ground cloves. Mm, and they smell so good. Uh, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg. This seems to be a little uh, solidified down in the bottom. Let's see if we can get a powdery teaspoon of it. Okay, there's almost a teaspoon. Let's just add a little more. Okay. And there's the nutmeg, which also smells wonderful. All right. Uh, next to the last spice is nutmeg and we need a teaspoon of it. There you go. All right, the very last spice is one teaspoon of salt, which of course, as we all know, enhances your flavor, your seasonings, it just enhances everything, as long as you don't overdo it. Um, you know, that can be a, um, a real bummer. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. All right, now, uh, I know I saw vanilla in here somewhere. Yes, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. So, here, we'll just put two teaspoons in. Like I've said in other videos, you can almost never have too much vanilla, unless you go overboard, of course. But adding an extra, you know, doubling what it calls for, 
or even tripling, you know, uh, is not going to hurt anything. So you'll see as you go along that you can tweak and, you know, try different things without necessarily ruining, you know, what you're baking. Um, to move on, though, we need a half a cup of unsweetened applesauce and these little uh, like lunchbox applesauces you can buy for your kids or yourself for your lunch, whichever. Um, they are four ounces each, which is half a cup. So, you know, if you don't have a jar of applesauce in the fridge, this works very conveniently and perfectly. All right. Uh, we also need one cup of crushed pineapple. And I didn't drain it because that pineapple juice will, of course, add to the flavor of your carrot cake. And, you know, it's, you'll see. <laughs> I guess I should just quit rambling. Uh, all right, half a cup of vegetable oil. Um, four large eggs. As you see, there can be uh, quite a few ingredients to something made from scratch like this. But, you know, at the same time, it's not, you know, anything so extravagant or difficult that even a teenager can't, you know, can do it. I know from experience because I started baking from scratch when I was 12 at both of my grandmother's instructions. And I think maybe there was one dessert I made that didn't turn out right. Uh, probably because I was doing it on my own without either of my grandmothers there with me to monitor, supervise, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, you know, it's really easy uh, baking from scratch, much easier than you expect. And that's why I made this channel to begin with, is to show people it is nowhere near as difficult as you think it is to bake from scratch. Even if you're not a great cook or a great baker, if you can read and follow a recipe then you can bake from scratch. All right, again, I will quit rambling. Um, we need two cups of finely shredded carrots, which I have here. Um, I had, I happen to have what is called matchstick carrots in my fridge. So I just put them on the cutting board and chopped them up a little uh, shorter than they were already. And they're absolutely perfect for this recipe now. Um, and this calls for two cups of chopped walnuts. Uh, but what I like to do is put, and the customer I'm making this for, um, you know, requested this as well. So, uh, what I like to do is add one cup of chopped walnuts and one cup of chopped pecans. And then after that, it calls for two cups of raisins. Uh, you can put two cups of raisins in if you like. I generally just go with one, um, even for people that like raisins, such as myself and others out there. Um, you know, it just, uh, two cups can be a little overkill. So, I'm going to begin to stir this up. I am not going to stick my electric blender down in this, um because I know I'll have it all over my kitchen. <laughs> but uh, to begin with, we're going to mix with a spatula, whisk, fork, whatever you have. Just, you know, mix, we're gonna mix it until it's blended. Uh, you know, doesn't have to be perfectly blended and all that, but just enough to get everything in your bowl, uh, moist, wet, and you know, blend it in with your batter. And you might be able to get it, you know, it kind of looks uh, at the moment that it could be completely blended uh, just with a spatula. And maybe it could, um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It would be nice to make a video for a change where I didn't have to run this noisy thing. So, I, I, and actually I think that's what's gonna happen. Uh, Cause it's blending very nicely. Even the, the four eggs that I put in, they, as I said, blend, are blending nicely. So, 
get this all stirred up and all completely blended because of course, no one wants to bite into a chunk of flour, you know, that's uncooked, unbaked in their piece of cake. So, just finishing up this blending here. I can see just a little more white flour here and there in my batter. So I'm gonna get that blended. Spray my cake pan with some good old pan and put this in the oven. Now, because this is uh, a, a heavy cake, uh, just for the lack of no other way to put it, 